Today we're going to determine if it's ever possible for this dream fraction equation to be true. In other words, could we find numbers x and y so that 1 over x plus 1 over y is equal to 1 over x plus y? So I guess we should really think about what type of numbers are we considering here. Could x be a rational number, an integer, a real number, a complex number, so on and so forth? Well, let's first answer this question for real numbers x and y, which in turn, as we'll see, will answer the question for subsets of the real numbers as well, such as rational numbers or integers. Okay, so let's suppose that we have x and y satisfying our so-called dream equation. Well, now what are we going to do from here? Well, notice that it's pretty clear that both x and y are not equal to zero. And why is that? Well, here we've got one over x, so x can't be zero. Here we have one over y, so y cannot be equal to zero. Okay, but well, what does that mean? Well, that tells us that there exists some real number. Well, actually it's a non-zero real number. Maybe I'll put like an x up here to mean that's a non-zero real number. What I'm really using there is the multiplicative group of non-zero real numbers. Okay, such that a y equals a times x. So anytime that you've got two non-zero real numbers, well, you can definitely scale them into each other. And then, well, for instance, the way to do that is simply to set a equal to y over x. Okay, so now let's see where we can go from here. That's actually going to simplify our equation quite a bit. So notice we'll have 1 over x plus... 1 over a times x is equal to 1 over x plus a times x. That's just substituting our y equals a times x into our dream equation. But now let's combine terms here and observe that, well, what, we will we, what will we have? Well, over here, we've got a common denominator of a times x. So that'll, in the end, give us a plus 1 over a times x after we build our common denominator. And then, well, over here we've just got one term. I'm going to factor an x out of this, and we'll have x over a plus 1. Or, sorry, x times a plus 1, and that's in our denominator. So now what we'll do from here is do a bit of cross-multiplication. So let's take this a and cross multiply it up to the numerator of the right hand side of the equation. And we'll take this a plus 1 and we'll cross multiply it up into the numerator of the left hand side of the equation. So that's going to tell us that a plus 1 squared over x is equal to a over x. Observe that we've still got an x in the denominator. That being said, well, now we can simply set a plus 1 squared equal to a. In other words, we have a squared plus 2a plus 1 equals a, or we have a squared plus a plus 1 equals 0. And now you can pretty quickly check that the value of a that we need, well, is not a real number. And that's simply by using the quadratic formula. We'll have a is equal to negative 1 plus or minus i times the square root of 3 over 2. I'll let you guys check that. So, well, what does that tell us? Well, the scaling number that we need to relate x and y is this complex number a. But since it's a complex number, that means that we in fact have no solutions in the real numbers. And if we have no solutions in the real numbers, that means we have no solutions in subsets of the real numbers, such as uh, the rational numbers or the integers. So let's say no solutions in integers, rational numbers, real numbers. But 
we have infinitely many solutions inside of the complex numbers. And all of those solutions are of the form x, which is any complex number, and then y, which is this complex number or this set of complex numbers, negative one plus or minus i times the square root of three over two times whatever we had for x. So we've got this parameterized family of solutions. So now let's maybe look at a particular solution and then we'll explore something that's going on in other number systems. We showed that there are no solutions in the real numbers or subsets of the real numbers to our fraction dream equation, but there are infinitely many solutions in complex numbers that's parameterized as follows. Now let's look at a particular example of that and see everything working out. Let's take x to be equal to two and then we'll take y to be equal to negative one plus i times the square root of three. So let's look at one over x plus one over y, which is pretty clearly equal to one half plus one over negative one plus i times the square root of three. But now we need to put those two objects together. And the way to do that is to maybe fix the denominator of this right hand term by multiplying by the complex conjugate. So that means we'll have a real denominator. So we'll multiply by negative one minus i times the square root of three in the numerator as well as the denominator. So let's see, that's gonna leave us with a half plus, now we'll have negative one minus i times the square root of three all over. Well, after multiplying that out, you'll see that the cross terms will cancel and we'll be left with a real number. So we'll have negative one times negative one, which is one. And then we'll have i root three times negative i root three, which turns into the number three. So we have one plus three, in other words, we have four. But now we can put that together and we'll see that the real parts adding up will be a half minus a quarter. In other words, a quarter. So we'll have one minus i times the square root of three all over four. Okay, so that is our one over x plus our one over y. And now let's compare that with one over x plus y, which is one over, let's see if we add those two numbers together, we'll have one plus i root three. Now we'll do the same thing that we did before. We'll multiply by the complex conjugate. So that'll be one minus i root three over one minus i root three. But then multiplying those things out will simply give us a one minus i root three in the numerator and it'll give us the number four in the denominator. But of course this is expected because this is one of our infinitely many solutions over here, but it's nice to see everything check out. Okay, so from here what I want to do is look at a solution in another number system. Okay, so now we're going to look inside of Z7. And what does that really mean? Well, those are the integers modulo 7. So those are the integers really between 0 and 6, where we perform addition and multiplication as normal. But anytime we see a number bigger than 7, well, we divide it by 7 and keep the remainder. So I'll let you guys look at some other videos that I have where we work inside of this sort of number system. Okay, so now let's recall that what we really need is x to be something inside of z7, and then y is equal to ax, where a squared plus a plus one is equal to zero. So over here in the complex numbers, that meant that a was one of these two numbers, negative one plus minus i root three over two. But if we're in an alternative number system, what we really need is for it to satisfy that quadratic equation. And well, since z7 is fairly small and only has seven elements, well, we can really just do a search among those seven elements, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and find a solution, or in fact, two solutions to this quadratic equation. And in fact, two is one of those solutions. 
So let's observe that 2 squared plus 2 plus 1 is equal to 4 plus 2 plus 1, which is 7, which is equal to 0 inside of z7. Because if you divide 7 by 7 and keep the remainder, the remainder is pretty clearly equal to 0. So that means if we were to build a solution set, well, our solution set would be x, which is anything, and then y will be the multiple of x, well, the multiple of x by 2, because 2 is the solution to our quadratic equation. Okay, so let's take x to be equal to something kind of nice, like the number 3, and then, well, y needs to be 2 times 3. In other words, it needs to be equal to 6. Okay, so now let's see what we get with our 1 over x plus our 1 over y. So our 1 over 3 plus our 1 over 6. Well, what I really mean there is 3 inverse plus 6 inverse. Where by 3 inverse, I mean the multiplicative inverse of 3 and 6 inverse, the multiplicative inverse of 6. And now let's observe that the multiplicative inverse of 3 inside of z7 is 5. And, well, that's because 3 times 5 is equal to 15, but 15 is 1 more than 14, which is a multiple of 7, so uh, that is 1. In other words, 3 times 5 is equal to 1 inside of z7, meaning 3 inverse is equal to 5. And then pretty similarly, 6 inverse will be equal to 6. And you can see that actually a little bit more quickly because 6 inverse is the same thing as negative 1, but negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. So that means 6 is the inverse of itself. Otherwise, you could do 6 times 6, which is 36. That's 1 more than 35, making it 1 in Z7. Now, let's do 5 plus 6, which is 11, but 11 is equal to 4 inside of Z7. So now let's read that from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. What we have is 1 over 3 plus 1 over 6 is equal to 4. And now let's compare that to 1 over 3 plus 6, which is 1 over 9. But let's see, 9 inside of Z7 is the same thing as 2, but by 1 over 2, we really mean 2 inverse. But now let's observe that 2 inverse inside of Z7 is 4, and that's because 4 times 2 is 8, which is 1, making 4 the multiplicative inverse of 2. So there we have it, 2 inverse is equal to 4. But now observe that completes the equation that we wanted. We have 1 over 3 plus 1 over 6 is equal to 1 over 3 plus 6. And you might say, well, what other number systems or other, you know, algebraic setups would something like this work? In other words, would our dream fraction equation work? Well, not all Zn's will make this work because this equation over here, a squared plus a plus 1, is not solvable all of the time. In fact, I think you can check that inside of Z5, that equation is not solvable. Um, but you can solve that equation in, for instance, Z39. And maybe I'll just point out right here that inside of Z39, 39, what do we have? Well, I did the calculation and you'll see that 1 over 2 plus 1 over 5 is equal to 1 over 2 plus 5. I'll let you guys check that if you really want to though. And then, well, where else could you do this? Well, perhaps you could do this inside of the quaternions or perhaps you could do this inside of some sort of matrix ring. Of course, inside of some sort of matrix ring, what you really need is, well, not a fraction like this, but you would need some sort of inverse. So let's maybe make that a little bit of a homework exercise. So let's find two by two matrices with real entries. So I'll just put M two by two R to mean two by two matrices with real entries with A inverse plus 
B inverse equal to a plus B inverse. But the same kind of game is played in this case as was played in our original case. What we'll have is B is a multiple of A, and it'll be a multiple of A by some matrix satisfying this quadratic equation. So maybe post in the comments if you find a set of matrices satisfying this rule, and maybe post in the comments some other places where you could play this game that are of interest, and that's a good place to stop.